Should the Miami Heat explore a potential Pascal Siakam trade? That is what is going to be the topic on today's show. We'll talk Damian Lillard as well. But I wanted to see if Siakam could be a trade option for the Miami Heat because he does fit pretty well in this Heat roster. So let's break it down on today's show. All right, let's get it. This is the Heat Report by Chat Sports. I am Nick Roloff, and I want to talk about this man right here, Pascal Siakam, because he could be the perfect four to slide in between Jimmy Butler and Bam Adebayo in this Heat roster, and he might help the Heat win an NBA championship. But before we do get in to Pascal Siakam, I want to make one thing really clear, and it comes to this man right here, Damian Lillard. Today's video is me exploring the potential idea of acquiring Pascal Siakam. It is not me saying I want to trade for Pascal Siakam over Damian Lillard because I did this video earlier on in the week about James Harden in a potential Harden trade for the Heat, and you guys kind of took it as me saying I want Harden over Dame. That is not the case. Dame right here, the number one guy I want for the Miami Heat. So this is just an exploration to see if the Heat could go after Siakam if no Damian Lillard, and just explore that potential fit. So don't come at me in the comments section. But before we do keep on going in on Pascal Siakam, I want you guys to go follow me on Twitter, at Nick underscore Roloff, and I'll tell you this right now. The first 10 people to follow me on Twitter, at Nick underscore Roloff, will get a follow back and a shout out. So go do it right now. All right, let's talk about Pascal Siakam because this quote from Mark Medina kind of sets some things in motion on the Siakam front. He had to say this, it seems inevitable the Toronto Raptors will deal Siakam. They expect a strong deal for return in the form of quality rotation players, expiring contracts, and draft picks, all qualities that help accelerate a rebuild. And I also want to add this too because we do know some other information regarding Siakam. And he's kind of let it be known through the media and other reports out there that suggest he does not want to sign a contract extension if traded. I don't know if this is a play to want to stay in Toronto because maybe Siakam really does like playing for the Raptors. But he has been kind of outward in saying he will not sign an extension with the team that traded for him. But this does still intrigue me if you're the Miami Heat because I did mention his fit. And I'll dive into more of it in depth here in a second, but Siakam at the four, Jimmy at the three, and then Bam at the five, that is very, very intriguing. It's a good defensive front court, and it's a really good offensive front court for the Miami Heat, because when you look at what Siakam can do as a player and what he has done over the past four seasons, he's averaged 20 plus points a season while shooting 45 plus percent from the field. And one thing that is very underrated about Pascal Siakam is his playmaking. When he came into the league, he was a raw prospect. He won the title in 2018-2019 with the Toronto Raptors as the second, third option with Kawhi Leonard. But as he steadily become the number one option in Toronto, he has upped his usage, upped his points per game, but also upped his playmaking. In four years ago, he was at three and a half assists per game. Last season, damn near six assists a game. He can do more than just put the rock in the basket. And I would love Siakam's playmaking and scoring ability with the Miami Heat. We're going to dive into his analytics more to see how he could fit with the Heat. But I want you guys to let me know right now, would you be interested in a Pascal Siakam trade? Type I for your interested, type P for pass. Let me know down in the comment section. Knowing Pascal Siakam some more, he's 29 years old. So you think of him as a little bit of a younger player, but he came into the league as an older prospect. He's 29, he's 6'8", 7'3 wingspan, which is really, really good for that size. So his measurables is very good. And he's got some weight to him as well at 230 pounds. And one thing I always talk about when it comes to the Miami Heat and acquiring players, you're going to need to play well in the playoffs, in the NBA Finals, in the biggest moments, because that's where the Heat play every single season. And Siakam, in his one NBA Finals appearance, appearance as that number two option to Kawhi Leonard, performed to the highest mark. 19.8 points per game as a second option in the NBA Finals is just terrific. Seven and a half assists, 3.7 rebounds, and he shot 50% from the field as well. Siakam was able to get it done when the brights were the lightest and the defense tightened up on him the hardest. Plus, 
He's the perfect four next to Bam at Abaya. We have been searching for this person to join the Heat roster ever since Bam took off in 2019-2020 because there is going to be someone at that four position that needs to space the floor and be able to play defense next to Bam. And Siakam does that at the highest level. Let's look at his advanced shooting metrics. And when he's shooting within 10 feet of the basket, 58.6%. That's pretty damn good because he is someone who hits floaters, someone who gets to the rack, and someone who takes jump shots. So he's able to hit that 10-foot spot and in pretty well. He also shoots 41.6% from pull-up range, so in that mid-range he can hit the shot. Not the most effective, but he is capable. And then his catch-and-shoot three margin, 34.1 field goal percentage. That was this past season. It's not the greatest. Let's not, like... Let's be honest here, call a spade a spade, like 34% catch and shoot isn't the best, but he's capable. And that's all that you really need from someone at that four position next to Jimmy and Bam. But let's go deeper. Something you don't want to hear in the bedroom too often, but let's go in here. One dribble pull-ups for Pascal Siakam, shooting 55.4% from the field. So he's very effective at catching the ball, one dribble, taking a shot. He only does it 1.7 times a game, but it's pretty good. Now, when he has the ball, and this is what he does the most, in three to six dribbles, if he's doing an isolation move or in transition, he shoots 48.7% from the field, 5.8 times a game. So he is very accustomed to getting the ball, performing a move, putting the ball on the rock, and getting to his spot. Now, this is where things get very, very interesting to me, is that he is someone who is a tough shot taker and a tough shot maker. When he's guarded between zero to two feet, which is considered very tight in the NBA. He shoots 47% from the field, which is terrific. 1.3 times a game, he does that. Now, this is the stat that really I like from Pascal Siakam right here. When it's just tight defense. Not very tight, but just tight, which means your defender's within two or four feet of you. He shoots 53% from the field on 8.6 field goal attempts a game. So he is shooting with someone in his grill, someone on his hip pocket, eight times a game, and he's shooting above 50%. Pascal Siakam is a tough shot taker. He's a tough shot maker. That's something that you need in the postseason because defenses tighten up, like I've always mentioned, and Siakam has proven in the regular season and the postseason that he can score at a high level when defenses are keyed in on him. But here's the thing. If he fits in with the Miami Heat, he's going to have more free roam, right? Jimmy and Bam are going to require a lot of attention from opposing defenses. So if that's the case, Siakam might be able to get more open looks, which just drives up his efficiency, and he could be the fit the Miami Heat are looking for to potentially push them over the edge if there is no Damian Lillard. Pascal Siakam does intrigue me a lot. And next, I want to look at what a Miami Heat trade package would be to try to acquire Pascal Siakam because it won't be as much as Damian Lillard's trade package, but it's not going to come for cheap either. So we're going to explore that here in a second. But I want to make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because we are going to cover you guys with any Miami Heat news, any rumor. We're trying to grow the channel. Our next milestone is 5,000 subscribers. When we get there, I am going to chug a beer on air for you guys. We're almost about 100 and change away, so make sure you hit that sub button. All right, this is my Pascal Siakam trade idea, and it is very similar to the James Harden trade idea I presented to you guys earlier in the week. And in this deal, to make money work, the Heat get Pascal Siakam and Thaddeus Young. So you get a backup power forward as well in Mr. Young. And the Heat are giving up the 18th pick, Jaime Hawkins Jr., Lowry and Duncan as salary filler, and then a 2027 first-round pick that is unprotected. I think it's fair, especially with Siakam having one more year on his deal. And if the Raptors do not want to extend him, I think this is a fair return for the all-NBA-type player. And when you look at what we talked about earlier in the show with the quote from Mark Medina about what the Raptors could potentially want back from a team if they traded Siakam, they get the expiring contract of Kyle Lowry, plus one of the all-time greats, if not the greatest player in Raptor franchise history. You get a young player in Jaime Hawkins Jr., which they wanted. You get a rotation player, which they wanted in Duncan Robinson, and you get a pick, draft compensation. So that kind of meets all the criteria that the Raptors wanted from the Heat side of offering something. But the Heat get 
They keep Hero. They keep Jovic. They get Siakam. I think this is a win-win for both sides. And especially when you look at what the Miami Heat get to do, you have a now potential young core of Hero, Jimmy, Siakam, Bam. This is very, very good in my opinion. And if you just slot those guys in as your two through five, and all you got to do is find a starting point guard, that is a very dangerous lineup that you can throw out there at any time. And when you look at what they can do on the basketball court, these guys are all 20-plus points per game scorers. They all rebound the ball at an effective level as well. And something I do like as well, other than Tyler Hero, they are also very efficient when scoring the Rock. 44 for Tyler isn't horrible for a guard, but when you get 54 from Jimmy, 48 from Pascal, and 54 from Bam, that is very enticing and a lot of good scoring, efficient players that you'd have on your Miami Heat roster. Plus, you get to keep Caleb Martin. You get to keep Josh Richardson and Nikola Jovic. So you get those four guys starting with a point guard. Then you have these three guys as rotation bench players. And you also acquire Thaddeus Young in my trade idea. This is a very enticing move. And I can be sold on this move. I think this would help the Heat get over the hump. Because when you think about what the Heat struggled with down the stretch in the NBA Finals. They struggled with scoring, and they struggled with depth in the front court. Playing Cody Zeller cost the Heat the Finals against the Denver Nuggets. But when you have Siakam in the front court, then you have Thomas Bryant coming off the bench, you have a lot of depth there. With Nikola Jovic taking a step, this roster would be reformed. It's better than last year's, and Siakam could help the Heat definitely get over that hump and reach the promised land with Jimmy Butler and Bam to win an NBA Finals. So I kind of laid it out, the entire situation regarding Pascal Siakam for you guys. So I want you guys to be the GM. Put yourselves in Pat Riley's footsteps. Would you trade for Pascal Siakam if Damian Lillard was off the table? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know in the comments section. What I think, if the Heat don't get Damian Lillard, which I still think they do, but... Let's be honest here. There is a growing possibility they don't get them. And the Blazers front office, Joe Cronin, continue to be scumbags and don't make the move. I think James Harden, Pascal Siakam could be decent backup moves. I get the Harden questions, but there isn't really any questions with Siakam. And he is a really good fit. He would play hard. Sure, you have that questions and concerns of him not signing a long-term extension. But I think if he got a taste of Miami life, the heat culture, the system that Pat Riley and Eric Spolster bring, and playing with Jimmy and Bam for the foreseeable future, I think he would get sold on it and sign a contract extension to create a really solid core four for the Heat in the di di uh, distant future. Excuse me. That's going to do it for today's show. As I said off the top, follow me on Twitter at Nick underscore Raw. First 10 people get a follow back and a shout out, but that shouldn't be the only incentive because I'm talking Heat basketball and I love to see you guys continue to interact with me on a different platform like Twitter because F it, not X, it's still Twitter.